Uh, with no further delay, uh, this short talk will be about um, some techniques that we use, actually a training tool that is called blood flow restriction training, and we're going to talk about using it in the lower limb, and a monitoring tool, which is the QF active range of motion device de uh, developed here at Aspidar, which is a new device to measure ankle range of motion in functional positions. So for those unfamiliar with what BFR is, blood flow restriction, it's actually a training method where we use an inflatable cuff to restrict the arterial inflow into the limb while completely occluding the venous return. What that does is actually uh, creating a blood pooling that triggers very beneficial responses that lead to muscle strength development and also hypertrophy. Uh, recent uh, research data also shows that we have a significant short-term reduction in pain, which is really beneficial in rehabilitation. Why should we use it in rehabilitation? Basically because we want one of our major goals is to restore or preserve the muscle strength and the hypertrophy of that muscle. To do that, actually, traditionally, we need to, do, to use high-intensity resistance training which is not always desirable when we have an injury or a surgery uh, because the loads from high intensity resistance training in the joint are very high. With blood flow restriction, we can use low loads, get similar results in muscle volume and, high, and uh, strength without having high joint loads. A very quick way of how do, how do we apply BFR is actually, first of all, checking about contraindications meaning that we check about absolute and relative contraindications like unregulated diabetes, severe cardiovascular disease, and moderate to severe peripheral vascular disease. These are contraindications. When we clear that up, we apply the cuff in the most proximal part of the limb, and then with the use of a Doppler, which could be portable or built in in the cuff, we can actually measure the maximal occlusion pressure. From that, then we will estimate the desired percentage of occlusion that we want to do. Then we have to also estimate the appropriate external load that we have to put to do the exercise. The ways to implement the BFR in rehabilitation setting, actually BFR can be used in all stages, even in the immobilization stage where the limb cannot be used or exercised. BFR has shown that we can actually decelerate the rate of decay of the muscle volume and strength, even without the use of exercise. In early stages where only active motion or uh, very minimal resistance can be used, the use of elastic bands, light elastic bands and BFR can actually be very beneficial. Uh, the benefit increases when we go to partial weight bearing activities and more load. The maximum results from BFR come when we can actually do resistance training, low load resistance training and aerobic activities like uh, walking and cycling. Uh, very briefly, some parameters we have to consider when we're using BFR. We never completely occlude the limb because it's not safe. And we use ranges of occlusion between 50 and 80 percent, which have been shown to be very safe and also have the maximum effects in strength and hypertrophy. And we're using very low loads. The, uh, regarding the cuff with practical pearls, the wider the cuff, the better because it's more comfortable for the patient and we can actually um, achieve the occlusion pressure at lower pressures in the cuff. Uh, the external load, usually we have to test the one repetition maximum and we use 30% of it. Many people have advocated 20 to 50% of one repetition maximum. The training volume is usually the most uh, researched one it has been four sets with a total of 75 repetitions. Um, the, when for some reason we want to change that, other people have also used training to exhaustion, to fatigue, to achieve the same desired result. At Aspidor, what we are doing is actually when we are not able to measure one repetition maximum test for reasons that have to do with the injury or the surgery, we're using uh, the, we keep the training volume steady and we're using the rate of perceived exertion scale in order to be able to monitor the resistance that we put. Therefore, we keep the training volume steady at 75 repetitions and we ask for the patient to give us a rate of perceived exertion of a maximum of 7 to 8 out of 10. Then, according to the patient's response, we adjust the load accordingly to achieve that 
RPE. And of course, we also monitor the pain responses during the whole process because we do not want to aggravate uh, symptoms. For the type of exercises in BFR, we actually use single joint exercises in early stages and we move on to multi-joint exercises. We use short rest periods of 30 seconds because we want to uh, promote the metabolic stress in the tissues. Uh, this brings greater results. As for the training frequency, we can go up to six times per week, but the minimum is usually three times per week. Now, moving on to the next, the, the uh, monitoring apparatus. Um, the QF active range of motion device was developed by one of our senior physiotherapists here called Mohsen Abbasi. And it's very simple. The idea was that with open chain range of motion testing, we do not get the full clinical picture of the mobility of the ankle. Therefore, we know that when we do range of motion testing in weight bearing positions, we have more um, appropriate results. The knee to wall test is one of these um, tests that actually is um, preferable because it gives us more information in a functional position. So clinically meaningful range of motion deficits can be identified using this machine, which is actually a specially designed platform that has a, an immobilization system that holds the foot in place and a combination of a goniometer and an inclinometer the patient is placed on that uh, ring, on that device, and then it can actually move in various locations to uh, to measure dorsiflexion, plantar flexion, eversion, and eversion. It has been uh, it, a reliability study has been done already inside Aspeter, and we've seen that it's highly reliable, uh, the least reliable one with a fair um, component is uh, eversion. Excellent reliability was for plantar flexion and dorsiflexion. So uh, we're currently using this device in our assessment unit, uh, and we are collecting data that will probably be part of a, of a new study in the future. With this, I wrap up the presentation of uh, these two training and uh, monitoring tools. Thank you very much.